Hello, everyone. Welcome to this conversation. The purpose of this is to celebrate International Small Business Month in June, and we are reaffirming our support for small retail firms in Africa through new programs focused at bolstering their recovery efforts. And to join me in this conversation today, it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Brett Perlstein, who is the CEO of Search Kings. Thank you for joining us, Brett. Oh, thanks, Juliet, and thanks so much to, uh, to our partners at Google for this opportunity. I think it's uh, it's we've really relished the chance to not only share our story but share some insights into the world of digital marketing, specifically on Google. Fantastic, that's great. And we know that SMBs are very valuable to the economy in Africa. For example, we believe that SMBs play a very important role there the engine of a lot of our economies uh, in Nigeria, for example, 90% of registered businesses are small, medium businesses. So you really play an important role in overall economic growth. Now the pandemic, as we know, has had tremendous uh, impact on uh, our industries across Africa and even across the globe. From a Search King's perspective, what's been your experience? Um you know, being a large scale business and servicing so many businesses across so many sectors, we saw 30% of our portfolio almost disappear overnight in the in the uh, beginning of Q2 last year as, uh, as lockdown started to take effect. But I think, you know, I really took a lot of our, our own learnings that we learned in helping businesses scale. And uh, we started spending more and more money online and getting in front of as many new audiences as we can. And luckily, we had a skill and expertise and a piece of technology that helped us really unlock value in people's businesses online and uh, and we've seen an, a marked recovery i think small businesses not only are the life force of the economy but they're far more resilient than uh, than they give themselves credit for and uh, i think we've seen an incredible um, ability for these businesses to bounce back for people who've lost their jobs to start their entrepreneurial journey and uh, fundamentally Google and digital marketing are underpinning a lot of that success. Absolutely. And I agree with you. There is so much resilience in the SMB space, in the entrepreneurial space. And we've seen a lot of creativity as well. People just really taking, uh, responding to the trends and uh, pivoting their businesses accordingly. Uh, some more than others, obviously. But I'm very keen to, understand, to learn a bit more about how you were able to bounce back. You mentioned you lost quite a portion of your business. How were you able to address that and um, navigate the situation? Yeah, so I think, uh, I mean, really, we spent a lot of time looking introspectively. I think, you know, there was tons of ways that we were doing business that that maybe could had room for innovation and, and the adoption of new technologies. We spent loads of time looking at um, how we submitted proposals, how we um, how we engage with customers without using cloud-based technology, about our internal communication tools that we used, as well as our um, communication tools that we used to connect with people um, telephonically, you know, using Google Meets. And really, it, it was a great way for us to not only cut back on unnecessary expenditure, but when we saved that those overheads, then really invested those overheads in future-proofing ourselves from not only a technology standpoint, but from a marketing standpoint as well. That's fantastic. And you work with a lot of SMEs. So just even more broadly, how would you say the pandemic has impacted the industry and the businesses that you support? Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a it's quite an open-ended question, Julian. I think it's really it really is industry specific. I mean, some of the industries that we've supported that have been hardest hit include the travel, events, expo industries. Um, those guys have really, you know, been at the, and the restaurant, hotel, and tourism industries. Those guys really been at the forefront of the of the brunt of this pandemic. But in saying that, um, you know, people are spending more time at home. Some of our home services um businesses are really really flying as well as you know um you know year on year we've seen a 135 percent increase in the number of e-commerce businesses we've onboarded into our business and and specifically the number of transactions those e-commerce businesses are seeing have grown by north of 400 percent. so it you know i think the pandemic has been devastating for some and an incredible opportunity for growth for others Absolutely. And I think one of the things we've seen, obviously, is an, ac an acceleration to digital and consumers spending more time online and doing more things online. 
but not every organization has been able to successfully pivot. What would you say are some of the challenges or things that uh, small medium businesses can do to just really maximize the opportunity that this period presents? Yeah, I think, especially in the retail space, the biggest misconception I'm seeing, Juliet, is that people believe that you need to have an online store to be considered part of e-commerce. And I, and I really think fundamentally there's a flaw in that thinking. I think, you know, the key now is to be online and to be and to have discoverability online and to be able to access, get access to customers who you may never have had access to before. So really ensuring that your business is has an online presence, that, that that online presence is mobile responsive, that you have your Google My Business listing sorted out are really the fundamental cornerstones of you, you know, a, a, a colleague of mine donned it, opening the digital door for the first time and really giving yourself the ability to enter this new crazy world that we've woken up in and give yourself the best opportunity for success. I like the way you put it, actually. There's something we talk, we talk about the four Bs at Google, which is uh, when you're thinking about your digital strategy, you know, be present, which is just what you said about making sure that you're found, your customers can find you online, be relevant, uh, be engaging. So making sure that you are leveraging the features of the online world and also be measure, be accountable, which is really about measurement because you also talked about cost cutting. And, you know, an, an important part of that is just being able to measure return on investment, what's working, you know, what to double click on and so on. And um, on that point, actually, um, from a cost perspective, what's been, <laughs> what, what can you share in terms of your experience? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, and, and, and this is a, a big benefit in our business, having come from the world of accounting, as I, as I said, I'm actually a chartered accountant with no previous history in marketing. I think fundamentally when any when we tell any SMB who wants to go on this journey and digitally future proof themselves um, for this for this new tomorrow, I think you need to have some sort of accountability on what success looks like. I look to business owners on a daily basis to say before you are willing to invest in these channels. You have to know your numbers. You have to know what success looks like in your business. Is it growing your brand? Is it finding new customers? Is it generating leads? Whatever that looks like, you need to fundamentally know how many of those leads or new customers you need to acquire for the marketing budget you are capable of spending. And I think that's a huge, you know, I think people dive in head first without conceptualizing Really, what is the what does good look like, and what does the finish line look like? And I think we did tons of that introspective thinking on our journey during this pandemic, and really set out some clear commercial objectives that were underpinned by our marketing strategy. I think that's very important for every business, just really being clear about what the objectives are, and basing the strategy around that. So that's a really really important point. Let's talk a little bit about partnerships. So. What role do you see online marketplaces playing in the growth of small medium medium businesses and what are some useful partnerships that can be enabling? Yeah, I, I completely. I think, um, you know, when I think about um, the online marketplaces, I think they're an incredible way for particularly small businesses to take that first step online. And I think, you know, you don't need an incredible amount of um, startup capital or um, or any real capital investment, and you can get onto a um, you can get onto one of these local marketplaces and start trading tomorrow. And what these marketplaces also do is, for the first time ever, where retailers really existed in a localized context, and their their scale was really as far as the furthest person traveled to their store. What these marketplaces and partnerships with businesses like Google can do is really give you not only regional scale, but potentially even global scale. Um, so I think it's really an incredible medium for businesses to think about not trying to be the biggest fish in their smaller pond, but really the ability, this this digital door that we spoke about earlier really gives them the ability to, to scale to lengths that they never would have had the opportunity before. And, you know, um, I think business owners need to look at clever ways to leveraging marketing opportunities through the line opportunities with non-competitive brands to try and get their 
product or services into the eyes or uh, in front of the eyeballs of new customers because what digital does and these partnerships do is really you know help you leverage your business to a in a scale that you never had the opportunity before because of your localized content and context fantastic and you spoke a, a, uh, earlier about some of the products that you embraced as a business that helped you to grow can you say a bit more about that you know fundamentally google has an incredible array of products from which i think you know the the really the first and most fundamental of that especially on the african continent is the google my business listing um for those of the um those people in the audience who don't know what that is that really is your that is your listing on google maps to be to a way for um potential customers of yours to find where your store is located what are your opening hours how do they contact you where you know can they see some of your products or services you offer and i think you know this is a free tool that google has made available to any business on the planet and i think it's one of the most powerful ones um available to businesses to take that first step in digifying themselves in a in a more um global context uh some other services again the, the google ads platform and for those of you who may not know what that is that is a that is google's paid for marketing solution on the uh home page of um the google search results and that is a way for you to connect with potential customers as as you said Juliet in a, in their moment of intent when you are hyper relevant i think there is an inordinate amount of data and analytics that you can start to learn about your customer and i mean the conversations we have on a daily basis is just how this data can really help business owners start to make much much smarter business decisions and i think you know those are just two google products that are that i think have fundamental success for you to help you unlock true potential online so still talking about the industry where do you see um opportunities in the e-commerce space yeah i mean it's a, again quite a quite a big sweeping question but i think really um you know what i've seen in terms of the trends that have changed since the pandemic is uh fundamentally there's always especially on the african continent there's always been a consumer confidence issue when it comes to trust in e-commerce and um in preparing for this call i i read some surveys that said north of 60% of shoppers who had never shopped online prior to the pandemic are now more comfortable than ever to continue doing so because they've realized of the convenience and the great experience they had so i think the biggest opportunity here and if the pandemic's done one thing it's really fast track that trust and that consumer confidence amongst online shoppers and in a small business context how does this affect them well you know consumers are now far more likely to have a greater propensity to shop at a smaller retailer because they've already overcome the trust factor that they had before so i think you know small business and small business owners fundamentally ran their businesses in a very relationship style personal bill one on one context in their little stall or their stores but i think with increased penetration specifically on the african continent in a mobile context i think small businesses finally have the opportunity to reach a new and greater audience at scale and but in order to do that they fundamentally need to be found online and i think the biggest opportunity for small business post the pandemic is knowing that not only are you a retail or a small business um owner but you need to start becoming in some degree a marketing expert and moving your your business model to have some sort of marketing focus because that's truly the only way you're going to unlock your potential online absolutely and with that point as well if you were to summarize three things that uh, would constitute tips for small medium <laughs> businesses either from the perspective of you know something to change in their way of selling or business models to think about and uh, um evolution what would those three things be i think the number one thing and primary thing is is you need to get online and the sooner you do it the better because the faster the 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 longer it takes you to get online the quicker you're going to get left behind and once you're out of sight you're truly out of mind um the second thing for me specifically in a in a retail context would be to take the first step 
as I said earlier, it's not all about having an online store to be to be e-commerce focused. I think shoppers are fundamentally changing the way that they're experiencing retail, and I think there's a huge growth in the industry to look at these hybrid models. So what I mean by a hybrid model is how do you do your browsing, your finding the business, your connection with the business online, but complete the traditional retail experience in store. So you know what i think is quite an innovative way that businesses can look at accessing this is lowering the size of their retail space increasing the size of their um warehousing space therefore there'd be a huge saving from an overheads perspective and then flipping that overhead into a marketing cost so it really really get your way to access new customers online at scale that's a, an interesting innovative way I, we've seen some customers flip the switch on uh, post the pandemic and I think the last bit of advice I would give, and and this comes kudos of my 95 year old grandmother, who's not only my role model, but the, the wisest woman I have in my life. And she says, you need to learn something new every single day. And I think e-commerce and and digi and, and digi digifying your business or, or, or the move towards um, the digital transition, your business is all about new thinking with new ideas. And I think it's nowhere near as daunting as a lot of small business owners think, but we just fear taking the first step. So don't be scared to learn something new every single day and try those new thinkings in your business on a on a daily and weekly basis. I think that's, I think those are really useful tips. Get online. Well, we say that um, digital transformation is the new normal. <laughs> so getting online and a lot of the tools to get you started are free and relatively easy to use. So you talked about getting online, um, you know, not being afraid to learn something new. And uh, there are a lot of uh, tools and guides available as well to just really help you along. So um, for sustainability, for survival today, it's really important for businesses to embrace digital platforms and, um, and technology. So that's really, really helpful. Thank you so much, Brett, for being part of this conversation and for sharing your journey. It's such a pleasure, Juliet. And again, thank you. Thank you to you and for the opportunity. And I really hope that we can inspire some business owners to, to think differently about their business. I think the, the number one message I wanted to leave with is it's not daunting. It's just different. So don't be scared to take the first step. Thanks again, Brett. And um, in closing, just uh, a reminder to all businesses, digital transformation is the new normal. And as Brett said, it's not daunting. It's different. And the more you get into it, the more familiar it becomes and you start to reap the benefits. And that's really the sure way to ensure sustainability today and uh, maintain differentiation. So, and also just responding to the current customer trends. So once again, thank you very much, Brett, for being a part of this conversation and uh, for sharing your experience. I'm sure it's going to be really helpful for a lot of businesses watching. And uh, we look forward to continuing to uh, work with you as a partner and to celebrate your ongoing success so we will be uh we will remain connected and looking forward to just hearing great things about search kings thank you everyone and um, hope this has been helpful